So last cycle, we really um, were just kind of introducing the main ideas of the periodic table. So we learned about elements, how they're organized in the periodic table, what the atomic number, the atomic mass, the symbol means, etc. This cycle, we're going to jump deeper in. So we're going to learn um, how those numbers affect how elements react with each other. Um, we're going to talk about chemical reactivity and how compounds are created. Um, but we're going to start off with a little bit of a review. So as you remember from last cycle, elements in the periodic table are organized by their atomic number. So atomic number is often found at the top. Um, hydrogen, for example, has an atomic number of one. Who remembers how we come up with the atomic number? That's right, just look for the number of protons or electrons in a normal atom. Um, the symbol, of course, the H for hydrogen, and then the atomic mass. And as we learned last cycle, uh, elements or are organized from left to right, starting with the lowest atomic number. All right. Um, so in nature, elements are often um, combined. They are very rarely purely found. We learned about this last cycle. Um, it's much more common for compounds to form. Um, and a very common example of a compound we all are familiar with is H2O. Do you like me a little drawing here? Um, so H2O, what is it? Two hydrogen, one oxygen, and that creates the compound of water. Um, this is what we call a chemical bond. It's a force that holds two or more atoms together. Again, we learned um, a lot of this last cycle, but now we're going to kind of dive deeper into what does that mean. So we all made our own atoms last cycle, so you should remember this. Um, this is just a very simple reminder of what an atom looks like. So helium, for example, has two protons, which are positive, two neutrons that are neutral, and two electrons. Um, the electrons are always moving, so we can't say at any given moment where the electron is because it's always moving. We're going to talk about more about their location in a bit. But remember, the protons and the neutrons make up the nucleus and the electrons move around. When we talk about electrons, electrons vary in energy. So electrons close to the nucleus, in this ring right here, have lower energy. They are more drawn to the positive protons in their own nucleus. But electrons on the outer ring, farther from the nucleus, have higher energy. They're moving more and they are more easily attracted to other atoms. We'll talk about that in just a moment. So remember, closer equals lower energy, farther equals higher energy. All right, so. As you um, could imagine, just like a magnet, when you have a negative and a positive magnet together, electrons are drawn to the positively charged nucleus, just like magnets. So the positive uh, charge in the nucleus and the protons draws in the negative electrons. However, electrons on the outer edge can be attracted to another nucleus. Um, this is, I don't know why. The analogy that always pops in my head is that meme of the guy looking at the other girl when his girlfriend's watching him. Side note, not relevant to science, but that's how I remember this. So for example, in this example of an atom, these inside electrons with the lower energy um, would be attracted to the positive protons, protons in this nucleus, but the ones that are farther away with the higher energy are more likely to be pulled over by the charge of this atom. And this is where we get into valence electrons. Um, valence electrons are the outermost electron that participates in chemical bonds. I drew a little bond. I'm noticing now it looks like Mickey, so that's okay. <laughs> so these outside valence electrons, remember, we're talking about it, electrons that look like this on the outer ring. Those are the electrons that have the most uh, energy within the entire atom. And those are the ones that are going to form the chemical bonds. Now, there's a pretty cool way we can determine what a valence electron number is, how many valence electrons will be in a particular element. Um, now, your book goes into detail on this. I feel like the definition might be just a little bit um, wordy, so I wanted to break it down for you a bit, but they also have um, some figures in there that you can look at as well. So this rule works for groups one through two 
and 13 through 18. Now there's some exceptions, um, which we'll talk about at the bottom. Um, for the groups in between, so 3 through 12, that's a little bit more complicated to learn um, how to determine the valence electron number, and you'll go over that in chemistry. But for now, we're just going to concentrate on these groups. So, in these groups, the valence electron number equals the one digit place of the group. So, for example, group number 1 has a valence number of 1. Group number 13, well, let's find the one digit place. Go back to your elementary math. The one digit place is three, so it has an electron number, a valence electron number of three. Group 15, what's the one digit place? Okay, yes, right here, five. So it has how many valence electrons? Five, okay. And the only exception to this, or the exception to this is helium. Um, it is a noble gas, it's in group 18, however, its number is two. We'll talk about that a little bit more um, at a later time. So what do we do with this information? Well. Um, a while back, scientists came up with the idea of electron dot diagrams, and this is to help us determine um, which elements can form chemical compounds or chemical bonds easily, and which ones uh, don't really bond with other elements. Um, so let's look at this. To make an electron dot diagram, what you're going to do is you're going to take the valence electron number. So remember, how do we get that? We look at the one digits place. So for group number 13, we're going to have one, two, three dots. Group number 14, one, two, three, four. So these are going to be placed clockwise. So you're going to start off going like this, and you're just going to keep doing it until you don't have any more dots. So if we start off with group 13, we'll start here at the top and place one, two, three. Same with the next one. It's in group 13, so one, two, three. But this element is a group 14. That means it has four dots. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This is how you're going to set up your dot diagram. We'll talk about um, what we're going to use that for in just a moment. This is how you will predict how atoms will bond with other atoms. So once you've got your diagrams in place, you're going to determine which elements can form bonds with other elements. Um, and by doing that, you have to determine which elements are stable and which of these atoms are unstable. So let's look at it. The first one, beryllium. Um, so it's going to have a valence electron number of two. So we're going to go one, two. And then here we're going to go one, two, three, four, because it has valence electron number of four based on its group number in the periodic table. Um, and both of these... Um, have unpaired dots. What does that mean? It means that in any given slot um, there's a dot by itself. So this has one, two unpaired dots. This one has one, two, three, four unpaired dots. The number of unpaired dots determines how many bonds it can form. So this can form two bonds because it has one, two unpaired dots. This one can form four bonds because it has one, two, three, four unpaired dots. So groups one through seven are what we call unstable. That means they can form chemical bonds with other elements. Now remember when we learned about the noble gases, group 18, and we talked about how they didn't really mix with other elements, and I made the joke, remember they're the noble gases and they don't want to mix with the commoners. <laughs> Well, now we dive a little bit deeper into why that is. So, remember group 18, we're going to take the one digit place. That means they have eight dots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do we see any dots without a pair? Those two are paired. These two are paired. These two are paired. And these two are paired. That means this is a stable um, atom. And no bonds will likely be formed because they're already all paired up. So if they have a pair, they're not looking for someone else. If they're single and ready to mingle, those are the ones that are unstable and they're ready to be paired with another atom. As you can see, my handwriting got a little less neat as I went, as I went on. Okay, so finally, um, unpaired um, elements are reactive and unstable. Uh, they're looking to stabilize. So when an atom forms a bond, meaning these pair up with another element, it's
stabilizes. Um, so they're, that's what they're doing. Those ones that are unstable, they're looking for something else to pair with so they can stabilize. I tend to think of it in terms of like a couple. They're out there single looking for their partner so that they can have a stable rest of their life. I don't know. That might be silly, but it's the way that it helps me remember um, which ones pair up and which ones are stable. Um, we will go over all of this together um, when we meet live. So this was just to give you an overview so you have some background knowledge. We'll talk about it together when we meet next. Of course, if you have any questions before then, um, you can message me. And then again, all of this information is in your book. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you next time.